complex robotic partial nephrectomy dealing with dilemma. We will review how to deal with incomplete ischemia and nophytic lesions and re-establishing margins. Case 1, incomplete ischemia. The patient's a 48-year-old male with a history of renal stones treated in 2007. Imaging at that time did not reveal any tumors. In 2008, repeat imaging demonstrated a 2 cm by 2 cm right upper pole tumor. Of note, there are two right renal arteries. Both renal arteries are identified and dissected out. A bulldog is placed across the upper artery. Doppler confirms flow. The second bulldog is placed across both arteries and Doppler still confirms flow. At this point, decision is made to proceed with the partial nephrectomy. Arterial bleeding is encountered. The side surgeon applies pressure on the vessel while the operating surgeon continues the excision to gain better exposure. The vessel is oversewn with a 3-0 vicral suture. Once the bleeding is controlled, the excision of the mass is completed. Vessels along the base of the defect are oversewn with a running 3-0 vicral suture. Additional figure eight sutures are placed for hemostasis. Cortical edges of the defect are cauterized. Hemostatic matrix is then placed in the defect. Next, a surgery cell bolster is placed and the defect is compressed using 3-0 vicral sutures. Warm ischemia time was 24 minutes. Estimated blood loss was 500 cc's patient was discharged post-op day two. This case demonstrated that the Doppler probe is useful in recognizing incomplete ischemia prior to excision. Arterial bleeding can be controlled by direct pressure from the side surgeon or robotic suturing, and finesse is to determine when to obtain improved exposure in order to control bleeding or to control the bleeding prior to further excision. Case number two, the endophytic lesion. The patient is a 60-year-old female found to have a two centimeter enhancing lesion in the right kidney. Tumor is completely endophytic, adjacent, and superior to the renal hilum. Here you can see tumor in relation to the renal vein. Ultrasound is used to delineate the extent of the lesion. The capsule is scored to aid in the excision. As the excision proceeds, a branch of the renal vein going into the tumor is dissected free. is then clipped and divided. Excision proceeds and brisk bleeding is encountered. The vein is exposed and attempts to clip it are unsuccessful. Hemostasis is achieved by increasing the pneumoperitoneum and direct pressure applied by the side surgeon. An artery is then identified, clipped, and divided. The excision is able to be completed due to the excellent hemostasis from the increased pneumoperitoneum and the direct pressure. Once the mass is completely excised, the vein is closed with a running 4-0 proline suture. Next, the collecting system is closed with a running 4-0 vicral suture. Cortical edges are cauterized. Hemostatic matrix is applied. And a surgery cell bolster is secured in place. Warm ischemia time is 41 minutes. The estimated blood loss is 500 cc's and the patient was discharged home post up day four. Control venous bleeding can be achieved with increasing the pneumoperitoneum 
direct pressure by the side surgeon, laparoscopic clips, or suturing the vein. Excision of the lesion can be completed if hemostasis can be achieved. Case number three, re-establishing margin. The patient's a 63-year-old male with a 2.5 centimeter real mass found on abdominal ultrasound. CT imaging confirmed a 2.5 centimeter enhancing right lower pole mass. As the excision proceeds, some bleeding is encountered. It is recognized that we cut into the tumor. The excision is complete. Bleeding is obscuring the field. Prior to re-excision, hemostasis is achieved with a figure eight suture. Once hemostasis is achieved, re-excision proceeds with excellent exposure. Here, a finger projection of the tumor is recognized and the margin is re-established again. Frozen sections are taken from the defect and come back negative for carcinoma. Warm ischemia time was 25 minutes. The final pathology report confirmed that the tumor was completely excised. Hemostasis and exposure are important for negative margins. They allow one to recognize different colors and textures. Intraoperative ultrasound can be helpful to define the lesion. Finally, wide re-excision with multiple deep biopsies are required to confirm complete excision. In conclusion, complications during robotic partial nephrectomy can occur. Having a strategy to manage these issues helps minimize their impact. Ease of robotic suturing and angles of excision may allow for improved surgery control during complex cases. Direct pressure by side surgeon and increasing the pneumoperineum are important first steps to control venous bleeding. Competent and experienced side surgeon assistant is essential to safely complete complex robotic partial nephrectomies.